It is obvious that the high temperature AC and DC superconducting cables that carry five times more power than conventional cables can meet increasing demand of urban areas and also can be a substitute for overhead lines whether there are environmental or simply aesthetic issues. Uh, HTS technology competes with conventional technology in power engineering and power engineering business is a very conservative business. So they always look for reliable solutions which have been proven for many years and this is something that we have also to reach with superconductivity. We, we, we cannot expect that superconductivity will be implemented in a product tomorrow. This has to be developed on a longer time scale. 10-15 years. These are typical time scales for developing power engineering products. And so this is all our timeline we have to think about. The superconducting cables are for instance not a reality for always the same reason for economical point of view, but in some location you have retrofit where the superconducting cable can be even from economical point of view very interesting. In terms of generation and transmission of electricity, you can use either AC or DC. In fact, the very first systems relied on DC generation and transmission. Over the years, it uh, has been established that using AC generation transmission is overall far more economical and better. From the point of view of minimizing AC losses in superconducting cables, the coaxial configuration seems to be uh, the best one. Such a configuration, there is no magnetic field outside of the cable and also on the uh, inner side of the inner tube of the cable and uh, there is uh, a minimization of AC losses. We have one model, we have constructed one model to study the current sharing in a superconducting cable. Obviously, we know that the real power transmission cable must be done from helicoidally wound tapes from mechanical and electromagnetic uh, reasons. But uh, in this case, we, are inter we were interested to study the current sharing, distribution of current due to differences in critical currents of the tapes. And that's why we uh, simplified our experimental model to just one single layer of straight parallel tapes Ironically, one may think that to increase the current capacity of the AC cable, one may simply increase the number of superconducting layers. As it was proved by Clem, only two external layers conduct the current for 45 degree pitch angle. At smaller pitch angle, the current can be even driven in opposite direction. This was a very important finding which guided the correct design of the superconducting cables. Uh, inner and the outer layer are both, uh, all the filaments are all parallel to the axis. There is a need for an additional superconducting layer, but only to screen the individual phase in a three-phase cable configuration. Here is an example of internally cooled three-phase cable. There are a variety of designs, but the main difference is in temperature of the electric insulation, which can be all cooled by liquid nitrogen or will remain at room temperature. The design of three-phase cable is far from trivial and requires an advanced engineering knowledge and intuition. Here is a demonstration how the bismuth-based 2223 single-phase superconducting cable is made in Berlin Cable Factory. The two layers of individual bismuth 2223 tapes are wind to form the cable with the intermediate insulating layers.
the basic thing about high temperature superconductivity in power engineering is that you can make devices more compact, smaller. And this is of course beneficial if you are going into applications where only very limited size is available. Other technical issues like cryogenics come into play. So superconductivity as, as the effect, as the superconducting wire works, but we have also to provide the, the infrastructure. We need cryogenics which work, which is also reliable. The cryogenics, cryogenics engineering in that way I mean. And that means the refrigerator, the insulation, the handling. The termination of that cable, one termination, voltage insulation for the nitrogen flow and you have the electric insulation. So such terminals are a very tricky device and have to be done not only for a cable, they have to be done for many other high voltage applications of superconductivity. We have uh, high power cooling uh, with refrigerators like Brayton or Jill Thompson, which are in the range of several kilowatts, cooling power of several kilowatts. And we have the medium range, which is mainly uh, Gifford McMahon refrigerators in a power range of several watts to several tens of watts, 50 watts. I think the largest is about 200 watts at 77K. You also have in this range, you have sterling coolers. Uh, cryo coolers are an enabling technology for HCS. HCS cannot go to the market because of these reasons. At this moment, it's too expensive, too much maintenance, etc. Cryo cooler operating at liquid helium temperature will have about 1000 watts of warm power for each watt of cold power. That's a ratio of 1 to 1000, which is given by the Carnot efficiency. If you go to higher temperature, liquid nitrogen is at less than 0 0.5 euro per liter. So cooling is by a factor of 10 cheaper. And this is the, this is the thing which makes industry interested in superconductivity.